Hi. So, um, first of all, I, would, I just want to talk about the about, you know, topic of this conference. Okay, so why, why does beyond search actually mean? Why, what, what does search mean to us all? So if we had this conference about five years ago, if we had this conference about five years ago and would ask people in the room what search means to them, we're probably going to have a completely different answer to what search means to people today. I want to show you an example by using football. So I, I know there are some Dutch people in the audience, um, so I apologize in advance. Um, any, any Spaniards around? No. Okay, so this, this shows you the search queries during the World Cup uh, game final. Uh, blue is desktop, orange is mobile. And this is the search queries about the teams during the, during, during the games. Obviously the peaks are, are the goal, the single goal that, sorry again for the Dutch people, uh, that uh, won uh, uh, Spain the, uh, the title. Moving forward uh, four years ahead to the Champions League final, Atletico Madrid, Madrid against Real Madrid, you see one, one difference. One, one, one key difference is that mobile is significantly bigger than desktop. Again, the peaks are the goals that were uh, scored in, during the game. It was, it ended up 4-1. But more interesting uh, and than just mobile sur surpassing desktop, and uh, as you know, globally now, uh, Google announced a few weeks ago that globally the search volumes for mobile have surpassed uh, desktops. Uh, in, in, in a category. Um, more interesting is that in the past, if you look at the previous slide, you know, there were peaks during the game, but most of the time the search volume weren't so high. That was because people were actually looking at the big screen, the fans were looking at the big screen while watching the game. Whereas in 2014, they were actually using the mobile phone in front of the uh, TV all the time. And people were not just searching for the teams. In Brazil, for example, searches for Neymar's girlfriend uh, were 10 times higher than actually the search for Neymar himself. And in Germany, searches for handbags spiked 11, 11 times more when Angela Merkel showed up with uh, a football-shaped ha handbag during the, the, during the finals. So I want you to think a bit differently about search. You know, search has changed quite a lot in the last four or five years. And that means that the, that data of intention is, is, is changing all the time. And more than that, Google is seeing every day 15% of the search queries are new search queries we didn't see before. Again, 50% of all search queries globally are new search queries that Google didn't see the day before. So changing, data of the intention is changing. Things are changing all the time. So I want you to think about search a bit more strategically. I want, I want to examine it in three, three dimension. The first one, search is becoming more complex. The second one, search is becoming more conversational as, as it used to be in the past. And more search is happening more in the moment, not just in a particular points of time during the day. So let's examine the first one first. So more complex. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, when you were searching Tom, for Tom Cruise, you would probably be happy just getting you know, a link to the IMDB page where you could go and find an answers. But so, Questions and queries in search are becoming more and more complex. We're asking more and more complex questions, longer questions. For example, what is Tom Cruise's first movie? Risky business. How tall is Tom Cruise? Five nine. Just, just under 5'7". He probably says he's 5'9". <laughs> um, and, and then, and then uh, or, or maybe an even more complex question is, who is Tom Cruise's wife? Because he had a few. So, so queries are changing, they're changing all the time. And one, one interesting thing, uh, fact I wanted to share with you is that actually searches for why are growing 1.5 more faster than searches for what. Okay, just think about it. We're actually asking now search engine for why are things are happening, you know. And I think in January 2014, the top question of why was why is the sky blue? We just, we, we're moving and asking more and more questions. And we're also trying to learn more about things from, 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 uh, from search. Search for how to has grown three times more in the past three years. And what's interesting to see is that, that's great statistics globally, but how to is changing in each country. So 
you know, you'll find, and you probably, you know, depends where you're coming from, you might some fi find a, um, some connection here. So search in ch is valid. It change, search is changing all the time. Search is becoming more conversational. What does it mean? So with, with variables and with uh, mobile devices, voice, mobile voice searches are becoming more and more frequent. Uh, in a survey done last year in, in the US, 55% of teenagers acknowledge that they do a, search, a voice search at least once a day. That's versus about 40% of adults. And it's keep changing and changing. You know? uh, I didn't have, I've been bringing my watch today, but you know, people with, with uh, watch, uh, either with Apple Watch or Google Watch or other watches are keeping doing those searches. And search is happening more in the moment. Okay, so now we don't search once a day. Do you know how many times we reach to our mobile phone a day? I guess 150 times a day. Okay, but the interesting fact is that although we're reaching to the to the to the pocket 150 a day, actually the sp the time we spend in total hasn't changed a lot. What has changed is that we just want an answer now. We want an answer in the moment. We want an answer, and, and, and we want to get the results completely now. So the pace of technology has changed is accelerating. You know, we know it's happening, but what's surprising me, me all the time is how quickly it is. You know, technology is changing in a pace that is incredibly fast. You know, going ten years ago, five years ago. Trying to imagine how the world would look like in five years' time is very, very, very difficult. And it would change our industry completely. So the only thing I could uh, promise you that the change is coming. You know, the world's going to change, the technology is going to change, people will change. I know anyone knows the change is coming. The only thing we don't know is how it will actually change our lives. Okay? So let's look at the world. Okay, at the moment we have about three, mi three billion people connected out of about seven billion people around the world. In five years time, we're gonna be around eight mi billion people and everyone gonna get connected, okay? How are they gonna get connected? Well, th there's gonna be a, a, few, a few ways of getting, a few devices as, as channels to get people connected, whether it's you know, cheap mobile phones, cheap tablets, Raspberry Pi, if people don't know what it is, it's basically a credit card size, uh, um, um, circuit board uh, coming out of Cambridge in the UK that you actually could create very, very simple and cheap uh, uh, products to do. For accessibility project like Project Loon or Project Fiber that Google is leading or Internet Org, org that Facebook is leading, which is an initiative to basically provide uh, internet access to the two-thirds of the world who are not accessed today. And the next five million will probably come from regions that we don't, are not connected now but it will also connect to the world in a completely different story. They will connect through a mobile, that's probably gonna be the primary or maybe the only device they're gonna connect with. And that's for them, the internet's gonna be one. The internet and mobile are gonna be one. And then the connect is gonna be the new norm. Okay, we, we take electricity as norm today, we didn't take electricity as norm 150 years ago. In five years time, getting con being connected would be norm. Everyone would expect it to be connected, even if you're, if you're a Tibetan monk up in the Himalayas. So technology is changing. So five years ago, if I would ask you, how do you connect to the internet, you would probably have three devices. You would have probably have a laptop, a mobile, maybe an iPad or a tablet. Okay? Nowadays, we have six ways to connect to the internet. We have a desktop, a mobile, and a tablet as before. But we also have a smart TV that is connected to the, uh, to the internet, either using an external device or, or, or using the, the, the software inside the, inside the TV. We have all the variables that, that we talked about. And then we have, we have the uh, in-car connectivity that we just um, heard five minutes ago. In the US, just to give you an example, in the US last year, 1.2 million cars were shipped with heads-up display, co connecting them um, to, to, to the internet all the time. Okay, so the world is changing, technology is changing, but most important is people are changing as well. Our behavior as consumers and our behavior as users is changing as well. We don't go online anymore. We live online all the time. There isn't much, I, I remember a few years ago, I would have to go online, there was an online session, you were charged by the session. 
There's no such thing anymore. We live online all the time. We live in moments, we reach to our pockets every single time. And we need to remember that, you know, you think to the, all those times that we reach to your pocket, you know, either to share a photo, to check on LinkedIn, whoever was the speaker who spoke in front of you, to check you know, the website just to see what's gonna be happening later on, to find a way of the cheapest restaurant around if you weren't happy with the food yesterday, and so on. So the moments are happening all the time. And it's important for you to, to understand that those changes of behavior means that the industry needs to change as well. And we need to find answer to those moments all the time. So if you take yourself, you know, example of, you know, um, Greg woke up late, late today, so, uh, you know, he wanted to know first, you know, what the time is, if you could get breakfast, maybe, you know, if, if you could do something else quickly. Or uh, during, you know, you had a break during lunchtime, you wanted to find out, you know, maybe what's the way to the restaurants because you, you didn't realize that Kimberly have given anyone a map in the folders to find out how to find, go to the restaurants. So you have those moments anyway, and it's very, very important for you to win those moments all the time. Interestingly enough, technology changes don't skip any, everyone. So if even kids are involved in technology today. So this is a study done in the UK. So 20%, 28% of the kids age of three to four years old in the UK use a tablet. They don't know how to read and write, but they know how to use a tablet. And that's up by, uh, that's four times more than what it used to be in 2012. And if you move to kids at school age, that moves up to 42%, compared to about 12% that were, uh, were in 2012. So technology is changing the life of everyone all the time. And we all need to realize that change is coming always. So it's very, very important not to miss to win those moments. The moments that matter to the consumers, the moments that matter to, use, to, to your users. It's still early in the morning. It's not too late to make the change. It's not too late to wake up and, 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 and make the transformation that we were talking about uh, throughout the day. I wanted you to remember three things out of the presentation. First thing is change. The world is changing. Technology is, change, is changing. And people behavior is changing. Second one is mobile. Mobile is changing the world. And mobile is going to be the way that people are connect to the internet from now on. And the last thing is, is moments that, that matter. We need to seize those moments and windows in order to succeed. Thank you.